from Wondery, I'm Nikki Boyer, and this is Call Me Curious, where every week I'll get to the bottom of those funny, strange, puzzling, or just gotta know questions you have. And we'll tell you the best we can what the answer is. Cause I've got 21 questions. I've been 21 guessing. You could teach me a lesson. Call me curious. Call me curious. Call me curious. Call me curious. So tell the truth. I need to know that it's real. Know that. Hi, and welcome to the show, everyone. I am so happy that you're here. I really am. And we're going to be talking to a fascinating expert, and we're going to get some answers. Mm -hmm. So I loved the zoo as a kid. I mean, didn't you? Oh, I loved getting there and getting the snacks and a balloon and just walking around and seeing the animals face to face. I loved it. But then as I got a little older, I don't know, I just kind of started to feel guilty about it. And then this week, uh, my dear friend Mr. Malone and I were chatting, and he actually told me he was going to the zoo with his neighbor. And it started a much bigger discussion about zoos. Are these magnificent animals suffering in captivity just for our amusement? You know, so that kids have a place to go on field trips or with their parents on weekends? Well, luckily... This is exactly the kind of question Call Me Curious was designed to sort out. Are zoos an inhumane relic of the past? Or are they an important part of education and conservation? Well, here to help me get to the bottom of this is none other than Mr. Malone. Hi. Hi, um, (laughs) Nikki. This is a great question. I was kind of wondering the same thing. So, yes, uh I'm, I'm into this. I think most of us went to the zoo when we were kids. I know that I did. What was your favorite exhibit? I really loved seeing the elephants. Uh, there was just something super still and magical about them. But I always thought the stink of the zoo was so gross. <laughs> like I'd always be like, Bleh! what about you? What'd you like? Well, I mean, the obvious, the monkeys, because they were so dirty and nasty. You know what I mean? And make all the children giggle, you know, when they throw, you know, their shit against the window. But um, I would say the giraffes. I really am fascinated by the giraffes. And it was always so incredible to see the giraffes in person. I, I have those memories. But I also know, Malone, that deep down the zoos have a dark side, right? Nikki, yes, they do. And you know, I can't process any stories with animals in peril or I captured. I want I want them all to be free. I mean, I even throw my cooked shrimp out sometimes into the ocean and say, be wait, free. No, oh, wait, I'm be sorry. Free. No, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you cook the shrimp and then you free them. There is something deeply wrong with so well, I've done that at a I've done that at a seafood restaurant. Be free. On the pier. I've thrown my shrimp over the pier. <laughs> Oh my God, those poor little deep fried babies. All right, so I have a lot of thoughts about this. I'm really into animal rights. You know how I am. We both have dogs. We're obsessed with them. I don't eat meat. I find myself thinking about this often. Um, It's become a really big question, especially since so many of us have kids and we want them to be able to sort of see and experience these animals. But the animals are in cages and I know that they get depressed, right? They live in captivity and they were taken from all the things that make life interesting and enjoyable. So is that worth it for the entertainment purpose? But I also know there's got to be some sort of... There's got to be a purpose. There's a purpose to the zoos. I mean, it's educational, mostly educational. It's really for the children, isn't it? I'm still on the fence. (laughs) Okay. I don't know. There's a lot of questions here. Um, Here at Call Me Curious, though, we live by the wise words of that great philosopher, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. (laughs) If you don't know, better ask somebody. So Malone, (laughs) let's do that. Let's ask somebody. I mean, let's ask everybody. (laughs) We sent out our very curious person on the street, Dax Jordan, to see if he could find out more about zoos. All right, Nikki, we're out in Orange County, California. We've got a nice, young, smart, educated, disciplined crew here. We're going to find out, should we be supporting zoos or are they bad for animals? What do you think about zoos? I like zoos. Zoos are cool, but harming animals are not. When's the last time you've been to a zoo? Oh, probably 50 years. 
Oh, so you're not a regular zoo goer because you don't believe in uh, poking at caged animals? Well, uh, my understanding is they're not in the kind of cages that they were years ago, that it's sort of an open thing. So the PR campaign has worked in as much as in the 50 years since you have seen wild animals trapped in tiny cages, you hear they're in big enclosures now and treated well, but you still don't go. Correct. So they haven't been able to bring you back for any reason. Correct. What do you think about zoos? I like the zoo because I feel the animals are safe there. I mean, at least they're not being poached. If you were an animal, would you like to roam free out in your natural habitat or have a private chef bring you food eight times a day while you sleep and get your picture taken? The private chef thing is it. That's it. That's the winner. All right. So I think a lot of us would be zoo animals if we had the choice, honestly. All right, Nikki, that's been us from Orange County, California. Some really good answers from the people on the street, I must say. But I kind of feel like we need more information. So Mm -hmm. I did a little homework on zoos and zoo history. And I just want to give you a little broader context. So here's the history of zoos in 60 seconds. From about 3000 BC to the mid 1800s, zoos were the worst. They were strictly playthings of the rich and powerful and inhumane leaders. Terrible living conditions, right? Short lifespans and totally gross and unpleasant. Then, around the Age of Enlightenment, we see the rise of research zoos, including the Zoological Society of London. They eventually open to the public, but it's still, oh, it's a pretty grim scene. The animals are living behind bars, and they're in rows of identical cages, and it's just not pretty. And that's how it is until 1907, when a show promoter has the bright idea to get rid of the cages and put animals behind moats in enclosed areas that resembled their natural habitat. So a bit of an upgrade for the critters. And that is basically where we still are today. So the history of zoos is not great. But the question is, are they still bad? Mm. So Malone, please say hello to zookeeper Ann Smith. Hi, Ann. Hi, Ann. Hello. Hi. We're s- nice to meet you. We're so happy to have you on the show today. <laughs> nice to be here. Give us some background on your zoo career. Like, how did you get involved and what did you do? So I'd always been an animal person. I had always been, had a pretty good animal sense, that sort of thing. So I realized you could volunteer at my local zoo. Mm -hmm. I signed up to do that just to sort of see what they were like because I didn't really know either when I was going into it. So I started out with kind of the easy stuff, like when you hang around the petting zoo and you tell people about the goats and the sheep and stuff like that. This goat is the mother of that goat or whatever, but people just want to take Instagram photos mostly. They're just like, you know, (laughs) Hannah, Mm -hmm. Hannah, Hannah, look over here, Hannah, Hannah, Mm. you know, (laughs) and it's just them trying to get their kid. And, uh, Then I started doing things like orangutan duty because uh, orangutans are really, really smart and you kind Mm -hmm. of have to watch them because they're very clever. And so I would tell people facts about the orangutans and I got very into that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And then I started working behind the scenes uh, with the the keepers. So I was the person that raked out these stalls and raked out the enclosures and, you know, went and got uh, brows for them, which is like big branches and leaves and stuff. And anything that the zookeepers needed to do, I was there. And I'm assuming that you got mm-hmm. your hands a little bit dirty, if you know what I mean. What was the grossest mm-hmm. part of your job? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you learn to identify what kind of poop is going to happen depending on who you're uh, dealing with. Like, they're, the giant tortoises had the grossest poop the world has ever seen. It was, you know... Really? Just, the tortoises? I wouldn't... Yeah, okay. because usually meat eaters had the worst poop. The carnivores had the smelliest, uh, gooeyest poop ever. Yeah. And, like, the, the ones that ate plants, like the antelope kind of things, you know, what mm-hmm. they call hoof stock. Those, it's like nothing. You can't smell it. It's just little pebbles and you just pick it up. But um, So if you're a vegan, yeah, your poop uh, doesn't stink, right? <laughs> is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the case, but uh, there <laughs> is an argument to be made. Okay, I heard a rumor. Mm-hmm. Tell me if yeah. I'm this is not true or not. Do wombats have square Wom- poop? <laughs> is their poop square? <laughs> okay, I found this out because I, I used to clean up after the wombats and I like them very much, but I was really kind of ticked off because their poop was not as square as I was led to believe. <laughs> Nikki, did you really believe it, that they pooped square? I did. Chunks? I do. They do poop square. Am I right? I've and never heard that they, before. They do. Well, you should start reading. Yeah, this but, is oh my f- God. <laughs> start reading I didn't even about know that woman. was possible. It's like Play-Doh. It's like those, you know how you push the Play-Doh through? <laughs> 
Oh my God, Anne. The different shapes. And I can't even imagine the stuff that you encountered. What was the most interesting or wild experience that you had training in the zookeeping program? Um, I remember they got a new gorilla in and he was pretty young and uh, they had a, a very large place in the back for him to like run around. They go out in the yard and then they come into their bedrooms at night. And he just was not only not going to go in, but he was having fun slamming the metal doors that was making him happy. Okay. And uh, it just shook the building. And um, one of the Keepers, he was he was having fun hitting her with poop. I he mean, was happy. he was just like a bratty oh, teen. I, see. I mean, yeah, that's what Malone was... does when he's happy. Yeah, I do. Do I? I do. I do. I do that. So, yes. were you ever chased like by any of the animals? This is not going to paint me in a good light, but um, I was hmm. kind of chased by a giant tortoise. Um, no, no, no. Because... Immediately, no. And no. Hold on. They're you were chased by the think. slowest creature on the planet. Well, how? That's Why? Funny. You didn't know that tortoise. I did. You didn't see that tortoise. He was like the big boss of the thing. And I was, I was raking the yard, and I started to talk to the keeper, and I just wasn't paying attention. And he had become kind of obsessed with me. He was just following me around everywhere. And you think, oh, that thing's moving really slow. You don't have to watch it. And so the next thing you know. Uh, the keeper goes, watch out. And I look and he's getting ready to take a bite out of my calf. <gasps> and you do not know the, the snappers on these things. They got a lot of torque, you know, so he could have taken a good chunk out of my leg. But oh my. Uh, I got out of the way <laughs> just in time. <laughs> so I I love, you know, you're telling me about this and like you're giving me the lay uh-huh. of the land and it's warming up my heart to a zoo. So I guess let, let's dig in. Like what is the main purpose or the mission of a zoo? that you would say in modern times, like right now? Yeah. People think zoos are a certain way, the way they used to be in the past, and they really are not anymore. Zoos now are mostly about conservation, about protecting animals from habitat loss and from poaching and from being taken into the pet trade and all these different things that humans do to them. Okay. So their mission is obviously good. Sounds great. And they aren't looking to exploit these creatures because they want Instagram pics. But are the animals happy? So the thing is, people look at an animal in a zoo and they may perceive it to be sad. They may decide, oh, this thing is, a, is, is unhappy. They don't know how the animal expresses itself. They don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Keepers work so hard to make the animals as happy as possible, as comfortable as possible, as healthy as they can be. And you get a lot of kids kind of from the city that you kind of figure, you know, they're They don't see animals. They don't see this kind of thing. And their eyes are huge and they're so excited. And I just like, that's really cool that they get to experience that. Right. And I really think that having the animals in front of you and getting to see them is going to inspire a lot more people to get into conservation or caring about what's happening with their habitat loss and stuff like that than if we didn't have them in front of us. That's nice. Do they ever get to go back to their quote unquote natural habitat, go back home? Well, the natural habitat kind of disappeared, which might have been why they were in the zoo to begin with. Oh my gosh. Because like what they're doing in Borneo and Malaysia right now, I'm all about orangutans. I'll go back to that. Mm -hmm. Um, Palm oil is a product that is in everything from Oreos to Olay soap to just everything you can think of. They got a million different names for it. Because it's so profitable, they will just clear cut forest in that area because it's cheap and they can get the land. They just burn it to the ground, chase out everything in it and grow nothing but palm trees so that they can make palm oil so that you can have Oreos. And most people don't know this. Most people don't know all the species that live there. They're taking away all the stuff they need to live and just displacing them, if not killing them. Right. So most people don't know that. Most people have no idea. There's ways in which we harm animals and we don't have any clue. So, I don't mean to be a, a buzzkill, but... <laughs> no, that's actually good. It's, it's what we're doing. Good to think about that kind of stuff because I don't think about that because I just let my heart do the thinking because I'm thinking, oh, I just want them to be free. That's what animal activists are doing. And that is absolutely admirable. But if they were to take their their passion and aim it toward trying to stop habitat loss, trying to stop poachers, there are people out there with guns guarding gorillas because people want to poach them for whatever reason or put the little babies in the pet trade or whatever. If they took their energy and put it toward that, they could really make a difference as opposed to, oh, that elephant looks sad. Let's right, let's right. send him to a sanctuary, which by the way, doesn't really exist because sanctuaries are just run by people and they're still 
You know, it's it's not that different, and they're not regulated like mm. zoos are. Zoos have a, a big governing body to see what's going on, and they're always being watched. And right. sanctuaries aren't. So basically, a zoo is an animal sanctuary, right? Yeah. I mean, there. I heard a keeper one time going, you know, we had, we had a protest out front of the zoo that day. And she's like, if we just call it a sanctuary, will you leave us alone? Because we're kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. The sanctuaries don't usually have uh, as much staff. They don't usually have as much commissary staff to prepare meals or medical staff or any of that stuff. They still have people come in to look at the, the animals sometimes because they need to raise money and they don't breed. So like sometimes people are, are saying, uh, oh, this animal doesn't get to you know breed in the wild or all that kind of thing that he naturally does. Well, the people at the sanctuaries don't let them breed at all, mostly. And you know, they're making the decisions for the animals too. Oh my gosh. We're trying to do the best we can. We really are. And in most cases, zoos are trying really, really hard to, I mean, clearly in the wild would be best. That's what we wish would be the case for everybody. But we just keep doing these things. We keep building condos. I know, it's us. Or whatever the hell it is. And we're taking up an awful lot of the planet and we need to be conscious of what we're doing. And frankly, I can't think about it all the time because it makes me really sad. It's so huge. That's so sad. It is. It's so sad. I feel like we need to be doing more to stop this type of stuff. Yeah. But, um, Anne, you did mention that zoos are doing a good job at um, keeping some of the endangered animals from going extinct, which I, I love that. And I know mm-hmm. I've actually read about the work that's being done with the California condor. Uh, yeah, the California condors, uh, I know the LA Zoo has a breeding program, and yeah, they're all about release. They get them to lay eggs, and they raise the things, and they're all tagged, and they're all monitored, and it's all about getting it back into the wild. In fact, did you see that news story where there was a guy who had a bunch of California condors just come nest on his porch, on his, his apartment porch? No. A bunch of California condors was just went, okay, this is home now, and they're wrecking <laughs> the joint, and he can't do a thing because oh they are protected they're protected and they're like too bad (laughs) so (laughs) sad yeah i would have been all enchanted though wouldn't you nikki yeah for a few days and then it would get gross because of all the poop (laughs) oh god yeah well you had a peacock in your backyard nikki (laughs) that is true i did have a peacock in my yard seriously (laughs) wow it literally landed in my yard and i had to go to the next door app to ask a bunch of people if they knew where it was from and oddly enough he was from the school down the street which made me say well how happy is a peacock in a cage (laughs) hanging out with a bunch of fourth graders (laughs) probably miserable but that's another show. I love that it walked over to your backyard, Nikki. <laughs> yeah, I like, love it. And it wouldn't leave. That's so funny. I need to know that it's real. Know that it's real. So tell the truth. Okay, so going back to the zoos, right, and saying that they, you know, Mm -hmm. it's great for research. You'd mentioned conservation, raising public awareness, Mm -hmm. right? That all sounds really noble, but do Mm -hmm. you think zoos are actually achieving these goals? Yeah, measurably, they are. There's a lot of release programs. The thing is, they don't go out and get animals out of the wild anymore. They they did back in the 60s and 70s, but now an animal doesn't come into a zoo unless it was born there. Or there's some reason that it's like hurt or otherwise they don't think it's going to survive. And then they bring it into the zoo to give it somewhere to live. Like there's uh, some zoos that have had sea lions that they found that were blind because that's kind of a common thing. So they find this great big guy who was blind and he came in and just ruled the place, you know, because he was, I don't know, 500 pounds or something. and He had a great time. But, you know, they don't (laughs) go get an animal that's thriving and and take it into a zoo. They just don't do that anymore. Where do they get a giraffe, right? Like, do they just go pluck one? And they can't just go get a giraffe and then bring it to the zoo. That would be really cruel. There were people that, like I said, went out and got them. But now I'm pretty sure any animals that are in a zoo were born there and have, you know, they're just moving forward with the animals they have because they can't release them now. They've never been out in a zoo. Right. Or out of a zoo. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel better. Okay. So, you know, I'm warming up a little bit here, right? So what do you say to people that say we should just shut down the zoos and allow the animals to go back into the wild and not to be in captivity? That would be nice. That is a very... Unfortunately, unfeasible thing to do. First off, you couldn't just let them all out. They don't know how to survive, the ones that were born in a zoo. You'd have to transport them all to their individual places where they thrive. You know, you yeah. can't, if, if, if you're in the middle of 
Wisconsin or something, you can't just let a penguin out because yeah. it, it doesn't thrive there. It needs to go somewhere else. So it's just logistically, that would be a nightmare. The thing is, no matter what you do, somebody will always want to have a baby, baby chimp. That's right. And somebody will always want to have a pretty parrot. And even if you say no more zoos, people are going to go out there that and mess true. with animals and take them yeah. into their homes. And they're going to be overwhelmed when the cute chimp is suddenly, you know, able to rip their face off. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting more info here. I'm starting to get a less of a bad taste in my mouth about zoos. Is there anything shady going on at the zoo? And that's what I really want to know. Is there shady yeah. shit going on at the zoo? <laughs> I can't say that no one's ever done anything that anybody would disagree with in a zoo. You know, I mean, it's run by people. That's the biggest problem. But you get to see life happening. There's a lot of life that happens at the zoo and there's a lot of death. There's a lot of animals that just get old and die. And you have to go through all of it. And it's so, you know, life affirming. It's it's yeah. eye opening. It's this really big deal. And like you're all part of it and it's all natural and it's all happening. Right. And I think it's got enormous educational possibilities for everybody. And I really think it brings us back into a place where we think of the world and our place in it as a whole, instead of just, oh, we're people, we want to have more coffee houses. Let's just build that here and just think about ourselves, you know? Yeah. I um, like this. That's like I a think spiritual thing. It really is. I mean, you have to get idea. used to animals dying. You have to just get used to it and you go, okay, well, yeah. it only lives three years. It's gone now. And you just have to deal. Yeah. Have you ever gotten really mad at a guest of a zoo? Like if they're trying to antagonize the animal or try to get a reaction from the animal? See, now that would drive me nuts. Every single day. Whenever there's a monkey uh, or an ape, they all walk up to them and go, ooh, 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 ha, 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 you know? And I sit there going, that monkey does not make that noise. You're probably scaring it. And the ones that like throw popcorn or food at it when we tell them not to or... You know, or the ones that decide that they want to carve on the trees. <sighs> people go to the zoo, and I'm sure a lot of people that work at the zoo forget that we have taken these creatures that are supposed to be out in the wild, and we've put them in an unfamiliar area and territory, and then we expect them to kind of take on human qualities like, oh, look, wave to me. Oh, look, perform for me. And I just yeah. find that to be so gross about zoos. Well, that's what I think we need to educate people about, you know, the respect for animals that needs to be there. And not, I need to get this shot to be on social media. You know, I need to climb into this cage so that I can get the best picture, and, right. you know, win Instagram or whatever. <laughs> Nikki. Win Instagram. <laughs> so I'm wondering if, like, put yourself in the shoes of the animal, Malone. Mm -hmm. Like, would you, how would you feel? You're in the wild, right? You're living your life. You're doing things. You're like, oh, I'm like, what am I going to eat today? Am I going to get killed today? And then someone, like, plucks you up, which I know they don't do anymore, but someone plucks you up and they bring you to a zoo and they're like, hey, you get feeding time three times a day. You ain't got to run for anything. You get fresh water. There's a bunch of weird people looking at you. Would you be happy in a zoo or would you want the wild life? What do you... <laughs> okay, this is a great question. And you know who you're... I mean, look who you're asking this to. I mean, of course, I'm going to love this if I was the animal and brought to a zoo because then I could perform, Nikki Marie. I could be in front of an audience and I get free food and I get the safety of walls around me and I can be introverted with nobody judging me. I do picture you at the zoo performing, but I also picture you being really pissy when you didn't want to, like flipping people off, throwing your poop. Like <laughs> I would I, do that. Yeah. I would. Be. How about you? If you were plucked up out of the wild and brought to a zoo, how would you feel? I think, think I think I'd be pissed. I'd be like, who do you think you are? This I was doing just fine with my family. I, ha I took the risk of getting killed every day, but at least I was with my people and I was doing just, I knew how to get yeah. from point A to point B and now you just turned me all around. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'd be pissed. <laughs> I, I, I can see that. I think you would be pissed. So bottom line, Anne, for us, right? Mm -hmm. Should we feel okay about going to the zoo and supporting their mission? I think you should. I think you should because of all the good it's doing for conservation, because of all the stuff we're learning about animals and how to treat them better than we have in the past. And if you're there and you learn about the stuff that is our issues for animals, you can figure out where to spend your energy to help make their lives better. And you can um, also just interact with some of the most amazing creatures that ever existed. And it's really, really it really opens up your heart and your mind to interact with something with a completely different view of the world than you have. It's, it's a big deal. 
Well, Anne, thank you so much for being on Call Me Curious and sharing all your knowledge on this topic. It kind of helped us get to the bottom of this polarizing subject. But stick around, Anne, because we have a bonus game that we want to play with you and Malone. Okay. Okay. We've got seven questions and all the answers have the word zoo in them. Ha! <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, but they're going to get harder as they go. So buckle up. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Ready. Okay. A simple instrument you can hum into. Uh, harmonica. Kazoo. It has the word zoo in it. Oh, sorry. It's a kazoo. And, and oh you're right. God. Kazoo. Yeah, yeah. A kazoo. Okay. A fictional supermodel played by Ben Stiller. Zoolander. Oh, yeah, good. During the lockdown, something at home workers um, attended all the time. Zoom meetings. Thank you. Zoom meetings. <laughs> um, star of the TV show, The New Girl. Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> oh, my God. Anne, oh you're doing so well. Pasta substitute made from squash. Okay. Zucchini. Th- no. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't <laughs> pasta substitute made from squash zoodles. Okay, green uh. green alien character on the Flintstones. Oh, the great kazoo. The great kazoo, something? but close enough. All right, last oh one. Thirteenth largest city in Michigan. Missoula. No, get close. Begins with a K. Ends with a zoo. Kazula. <laughs> no, Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Uh, uh, Kalamazoo. <laughs> okay. Good job, Anne. I think you might be the winner of the bonus game. Congratulations. Thanks Thank a lot, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> She's all cheerful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was great. Ah, what a great guest, Malone. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Bye. Wow, she was awesome. All right, Malone, that is it. I'll see you next week. Go pet your dog, Steve. Kiss him for me. Bye. Bye. Okay, so are zoos an inhumane relic of the past, or do they play an important role in conservation and education? In a perfect world, animals would live in their natural habitats, but we don't live in a perfect world. And since they aren't capturing new animals and bringing them here, zoos do the best that they can to nurse sick animals, help them from going extinct, and to give us one-on-one experiences that we just can't get from movies or books. So, I think it's okay to visit the zoo. Just please don't try and pet the tiger. Okay, that's our show for today. Hey, tell us what questions are on your mind. Send us a voice memo or you can email us at callmecurious at wondery.com. Or you can even hit me up on Instagram at Nikki Boyer. I would love to hear from you and get to the bottom of all your questions because I don't know stuff too. From Wondery, I'm your host, Nikki Boyer. Our theme song is Tell the Truth by Yana. Thanks to Mr. Malone for joining me on today's show. And thank you to our guest, Ann Smith, who helped us get to the bottom of our zoo dilemma. New episodes drop every Thursday. Rich Goodman is our senior producer. Gary Lucy and Polly Stryker, producers. Our editor is Steve Maser. Scott Velasquez, music supervisor for Freeze on Sync. Our street interviewer is Dax Jordan. Sam Ada, Rob Spate, and Danny Bringer are our engineers. And Tina Rubio and Marshall Louie are the executive producers for Wondery. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. Remember, stay curious. Stay curious.